We tell stories at Milwaukee PBS. Here's one you may have missed. Some students at Franklin High School are learning something very dear to us here at Milwaukee PBS. They're fast becoming the next generation of filmmakers and video storytellers. Let's see them in action. That's great. They probably come in thinking that they're just going to pick up a camera and start shooting. CJ, Here. Jacob. Here. That's camera one, two, okay. three. And then they start to learn, oh my gosh, there are so many different jobs available. Teacher puzzles by Avery, sibling mascots by Nick, and seven types of high schoolers. There are so many different things to learn. Yeah. Sounds like the mic's picking it up. Yeah, and it'll be better when I'm like right over them. And I think they get a little scared because you've got thousands of dollars with equipment in the studio and they're going to learn all those jobs and then work together to produce a show. I realized sophomore year that I should join the program, so I did, and I just fell in love with it as soon as I started. That first day of class, I was like, this is where I belong. If you have an idea, you can take it from the start to the finish with shooting it, writing it, producing it, editing it. It's a lot of fun. So this school has had some form of video in it since the early 80s. So that's 40 years almost of video production of some kind. So. It's got a long history of it. This uh, class is really based off of how a company should run, so we have deadlines we need to meet, and if the deadlines aren't met, then you get you don't get a grade for that project. It's on camera too, but I want you to lean into camera one, and we're gonna cut to there. We can keep about 10 kids busy learning different jobs in the studio, so they learn all the studio jobs. I do a lot of the work with the cameras and setting up the studio, as well as running the video switcher that we use for our webcast. I really wanted to get the kids a real world experience. Put that in the back of your head. They need to understand the media message. They need to understand how it's created so that they don't become a victim of it, that they really can understand and, and use it. Which one do you think would be a better idea, the skit one or the actual documentation? You have more control over a skit. My directing is like my big dream, but being on camera has never been a huge issue for me. I sometimes host the Saber Roar. <laughs> Good morning, Franklin High School, and welcome back to the Saber Roar. Our Saber Roar creates community. When you have 1,500 kids, how do you create community? You need a, a common time. Well, the Saber Roar, which is our news and entertainment show, once a week, everybody's watching it at one time. All these great things that go on in a school, a lot of times kid, people don't know about them. We get to highlight all of them and show them back to the students and make them feel good about where they go to school. Seeing the finished product is just one of the best feelings in the world, knowing that all the effort you've put into something over the last month or few weeks has finally worked out and everyone likes it. We do all kinds of videos where teachers are involved, where they are the actors. Following the December 14th vote to repeal net neutrality. It's built around a particular teacher's personality, you know, a video that we do. We built our one-to-one -one program in Franklin. I literally have to e I just email, say, is anybody interested in helping kids out with this video? And I'll get email after email from teachers who are willing to be on camera. And if they're not willing to be on camera, they're willing to donate their room or whatever. You cannot do this without a village. And I, I preach that to the kids all the time because I say to them, you need to treat these people with respect because as soon as they stop wanting to be interviewed or wanting to show up in your video, we don't have a program. I, the reason we have such a rich program is because we have a village that truly supports it in every way possible. What surprised me the most would definitely be the amount of collaboration that's necessary. Uh, you might be able to think that you could get by just doing it yourself, but you can't. You need to work with other people and rely on them and trust that they know what they're doing as well. So where's the um, some video footage of some of these things that we've talked about? When I teach this class, I, I really teach it from two standards, collaboration and communication. And the kids all come in really wanting to learn the video skills. And that is one of my standards as well. But that's, I look at that as the bait to get them to learn the other two things which are going to they're going to use the rest of their life, communication and collaboration. She tries to stress that we need to work with everybody and like get out there, like communicate with other people. You need to really work as a team in order to get the project that you want. The kids will tell you it's not a blow off class. The skills that they learn, you know, leadership, problem solving, critical thinking, um, they learn to fail and recover. <laughs> Trying to find time to put aside where I'm not doing my extracurriculars, when I'm not at work, or when I'm not having family problems, or needing to sleep. It's <laughs> hard to find time to film, but you just gotta get it in there, and you gotta get it done as best as you can with what you have. Yeah, that's all done. I value them screwing up, because we all know as adults, 
when we've learned the best lesson, it's because we've screwed something up really big. From here to here, it seems like a big jump. And then recovered. So I allow them to screw up as long as they're trying, as long as they're moving forward. And in that screw up, they can say to me, this is what I learned, this is what I would do differently. To me, that's pro they prove learning. What else did he say to you that thought, you thought was interesting? I focus more on the interview about what he did and what he does rather than like, why are you here? I don't want them all to be filmmakers. I want it to be communicators and collaborators. Those are the two things that they will take with them forever. Over the course of the four years I've been in the program, I've really been able to grow my communication skills and I'm much more comfortable working with other people now. That's probably what surprised me the most is how I've grown into learning this new skill and trade and just growing into trying to perfect my work. I think what I'm most proud of is the work that I put in, the effort that I put into each piece and that people get to see it and can relate to it. That's my whole goal is to bring light to these people that don't have a voice and I want to be that voice for them. Is my collarbone showing? Having the opportunity to have such an outstanding class to be able to show my voice and be that voice is just something outstandingly to be proud of. So those kind of things, knowing that they can make the world a better place, to me, is more important than the video. The video's great, but I really think the, you gotta be a citizen first and a human being first, and if you're a great filmmaker and you're good at it and you got your start here, that's fabulous too. We'll see you next week. Watch 1036 on Milwaukee PBS and watch online at milwaukeepbs.org.